in my vinyl community, um, Jason. It's uh, Saturday night. Um, just wanted to do a video. I uh, studied all day, so just kind of want to take a break and do one before I go to sleep. Um, I saw that uh, Sublime, Sublime Media was doing a um, 1,000 subs contest. Congratulations. It's quite a feat, 1,000 subscribers. Um, I, I, I've seen videos, I've been watching uh, Battle Community videos for a few years and um, I definitely remember, it used to be a lot more intermittent, like I, I would, wouldn't really f search out certain people, I would just kind of, you know, Google or search for, you know, recent vinyl finds or whatever. Um, and um, so yeah, I used to watch your videos, I've been watching for a while, um, but pretty intermittently. Um, I just, you know, started making these videos, so I'm, you know, trying to be a little more involved, um, um, you know, in people's channels and whatever. Uh, so I, I did, I just recently started subscribing to people's channels I never used to. Um, it's kind of a new thing. Um, so, so yeah, so I guess I'm a new subscriber. Um, but, um, I, I did see your contest, um. You know, and I just started bringing back good memories, painful memories, you know, thinking about the ones that got away, um, you know, thinking about stuff that that I sold that I maybe kind of regret. Um, I've sold some, some fairly expensive records, you know, you know a few hundred bucks, um, one of which I wish I had back. <laughs> I'll never find it again, but it is what it is. Uh, it was kind of fun. I mean, this is more of a, like, yeah, like a show off show off video I guess like you mentioned um, I, I've i always been a collector even when I was a kid I used to collect baseball cards and I would you know just take them in my room and just look through all the ones and I have my like my special one I remember like my Ken Griffey Jr. in this big case um, and I'd like take it around with me and so I, I've always been a collector um, you know and it's kind of collecting records obviously the music but it's always like you want to curate your collection if someone looked through it they'd be like totally blown away um, so that's kind of one of the ways I approach my collection so um, I guess this is kind of yeah, showing off your, your goods um, so I tried to I don't know rare I tried I kind of tried to make it I tried to do like a dollar threshold um, for the expensive ones, I also I just did some stuff that was r like just random, but probably not worth anything. But it's just uh, like a test press or whatever. Um, so I guess that's pretty rare. Um, and I guess just you know interesting stuff to me that I guess I you would ne I never think I would find or so. But yeah, I used the hundred dollar th uh, threshold for most of this stuff. I mean, give or take. Either I paid a hundred for it or I kind of selling for around a hundred. Um, I did have a lot of stuff that was kind of in between that like fifty to eighty dollar range. I didn't want to show. I just actually I ended up getting a pretty huge stack, um, much bigger than I anticipated. Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna get into it and uh, start showing some of the records. Uh, the first one, I'll try to be quick because there's a, there's a huge stack. Uh, another side of Bob Dylan. Um, this is a recent purchase. I got this, I bought this for a dollar um, for, you know, maybe a couple months ago. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not a huge Dylan fan. There's a few records of his I really like. Uh, Highway 61, Blood on the Tracks. Um, this one's um, a, lot, a lot more acoustic. This one is his earlier albums. But for a dollar, I couldn't pass up a Dylan record, and it was fairly clean. Uh, why this one's rare, I guess, this is, uh, I don't know if you can see on here, the, the label is actually embossed. Um, so I thought that was interesting, and I, I kind of just passed it up, I looked it up recently, and apparently, per Discogs, there's like less than 100 of these made. Um, so I, I don't know. I. There was never one sold. There's one listed for 600 right now on Discogs, and this is probably this is at least a VG plus. Uh, I mean, it's a fairly quiet record, so there is a little bit of noise just because it's there's a lot of silence. But I looked on Pop Psych, and it's sold for I think it sold first in 2011 for like 600, um, but it's been it's sold a lot lot more since then, uh, at least on Pop Psych, and um, it ranges from about a couple hundred to 600. So. 
I don't know how much it's worth, but I'll probably sell it just so I can buy something great. But uh, pretty interesting that this is, a, I guess, one of the rare Bob Dylan records. I know he has that um, that freewheeling one that's like super rare. But so that for a dollar, I mean, that was a good purchase. Um, so this next one, I'm gonna show a lot of Brazilian records too because I, Brazilian, I've been, I just started paying money for records maybe within the maybe a lot of beginning of 2017. Um, before I would just buy stuff at garage sales or whatever, and I didn't really want to spend too much money. Um, but recently, last year, especially about this time last year, there was a two or three weeks where there was a lot of good Brazilian stuff that came on eBay. Um, so I, I spent quite a bit, <laughs> quite a bit of money in those two to three weeks. So this is one of them I purchased. It's so Imaginario. Um, this is probably arguably one of my most valuable records. I would say I pay, paid close to two hundred for it. Uh, maybe just slightly under. Uh, I think one just sold for like near main copy, like three fifty. So I got. I guess I got a decent deal. Um, this is really good. This is like uh, it's kind of like I don't know. I guess I've heard them compared to like the Pink Floyd of of Brazil. Um, um, it's it's good. The the uh, Louis Wagner. He plays piano. I think he's kind of the head of the. The band. Um, these guys did a lot of backup for Milton Nascimento as well, uh, some of his solo stuff. Uh, but yeah, th this is really good. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna throw this one on, play it while we're uh, while I'm talking here. But it, it's an interesting one too because it's um, uh, it's a, it's a sandwich cover, which is kind of I don't know. I put this. It has actually put a cardboard in the back, but it's, uh, I don't know, sandwich covers are kind of weird, it comes in like a plastic sleeve, um, so it's, I don't know, it's not your typical, <laughs> I guess the record comes in here, it's very, like, kind of loose, I don't know, it's kind of interesting, I think Odeon is the only one who is, uh, who is doing, who is doing these sandwich covers. Uh, this next one, this is another Brazilian record. This is Paulo Ginez. Um, this one, uh, his records don't sell for that much, but this one particularly does. It's super funky. Um, I don't know why this starting. Uh, this one's super funky. Uh, I think the Gershon combo is on here as backup. Um, so I, I would definitely recommend this one. Yeah, if you're kind of into like the Brazilian like soul funk stuff, um, definitely check this one out. This is probably I got this one for about a hundred. Goes a little more than that on Discogs. But. This one is um, Eduardo Araujo, um, another Brazilian record. Uh, this one, this one needs to be repressed. I think it only had just the original press. Um, so I got this one for a little more than a hundred, I believe. Uh, this one, I discovered this one because this is. Um, Mad Lib does those kind of, uh, I don't call them comps, but he's sampling stuff uh, from different, he did like a series or something from like different regions, different countries, whatever. So this, there's one song on there, um, I think it's, it's the last song on here, I think Opiange, I think is the name. Um, so this was on Beverly. Uh, but yeah, this is the last two songs on this are just mind blowing, really good. Uh, definitely checking this out if you, uh, if you haven't heard it. Um, here's another uh, Brazilian record. This is a newer record. This is Tiago França. He's uh, he plays um, some of the brass in the meta meta. This is on uh, Goma Dringa. This is my my favorite like new Brazilian label. I, I've mentioned it before. Um, I, I got the, I bought this one brand new. I've only played it a couple times. Um, I just just going through my records. It's all it's sold on Discogs recently for hundred bucks. So I thought I'd show this one. This is really good. This is yeah, it's basically like. It's kind of like jazz, but it's kind of like samba jazz. It's not too out there. Yeah, it's like samba jazz. It's good though. I like it. Um, this record, this is uh, this is Bernhoff. Um, this is a live album. Uh, one, there's two discs. One is with he's by himself. One is he plays with a band. Uh, Bernhoff is Jarl Bernhoff. I think he's from, he's from Norway. Um, he's he's very talented. Um, I don't know, his studio stuff's good, but live he does everything solo and he does a lot of uh, loops. Um, 
so he plays guitar, he sings, he just he does a lot of backup vocals and just does the looping thing. Uh, I seen him play live once and it's just it's mind blowing. He's really good. Um, so this is I wanted to get his live album. This was a small press from I think rec, I forget the name Klubin something some small record store in Norway or maybe it's big in Norway I don't know. Um, so I actually I, this is the first record I've spent money on. I paid a hundred bucks for this. I was the first one to buy it on Discogs. I just as soon as it came on it didn't really matter. I mean obviously there's a money limit but whatever it was gonna be I wanted to buy it so I got it for a hundred bucks. Um, and it's sold about then, around that, more or less, for, since I, I bought it maybe a couple years ago. Um, but this is really good. Check this one out. Um, this one is, this is uh, Little Dragon um, Season High. This is their latest album. Uh, this is not a very expensive album, but I wanted to show it because it's um, it was signed. And these guys are from Sweden. Um, I saw them recently at a small venue out in the desert. Uh, like 200 people, and I've seen them a few times, but mostly at like music festivals and stuff. So to be that close, uh, this they just blew me away. Um, so so good. Uh, it's like electro pop, I guess. Um, but I want to show because it it's Swedish and because it's signed. I got uh, we they kind of had like a little trailer in the back, and we waited around and kind of snuck into this like little after party, and I got to speak to the lead singer and the guitarist. I didn't get them all to sign it. I was kind of. I don't know, I get a little starstruck and a little nervous, um, so I, I definitely missed the, I think it was the bassist, he was walking around, I didn't even realize he was in the band, I mean, uh, <laughs> I was just so nervous, but uh, yeah, so this is sign, this is cool, I just want to show it's Swedish, um, and actually an another another Swedish band, um, this is Dunian, I actually saw them last summer in the same place I saw Little Dragon, so small venue, it's, but these guys actually came out to the merch booth after, and they were, um, they were, um, you know, just chatting it up. So I actually got to talk to the lead singer. Who, I guess he was kind of like a child prodigy or something. Um, but these are this is a Swedish prog band, um, and this is this one's cool. I don't know, you can't really see. They signed it in black, but on the back, I think this was the basis. He signed it, and he actually drew like a spaceship. Um, like he signed it down here. One of the guys, I think this might be the, no, this is the bassist, that's the drummer, and he, and he drew, he drew like a spaceship beaming up um, sheep. So I thought that was kind of fun. So these guys were cool, really nice. I talked to them for quite a bit. Uh, really good live as well. Um, yeah, that record's not very expensive either, but it's signed, so that's all I wanted to show. And they're Swedish. Um, this is the one I bought. Uh, I probably paid a little over 100 for this. Omar Rodriguez Lopez. Um, Susana de, de, uh, de los Am Amores. Um, this one, I think it's expensive just because it was only pressed in Europe, maybe. I don't know. This is probably my favorite, Omar Rodriguez Lopez. Um, so when it came on sale for like a reasonable price, I mean, I definitely didn't get it cheap, but on the lower end, I guess, for what the time, it's a near mint copy. Um, so I had to grab it. Um, this is a great album. I love this one. Um, this is uh, Krumbin. I, I showed this in my first, well not this, I showed the, the test pressing I got in my first video, so I'm not going to show that one. This is uh, this is the actual play copy I got. Um, I, I think I mentioned in my first video, I, I, I won the first press because I was going to go see them at a festival and they were playing at a small stage, so I thought it was a good chance I'd get it signed, and I did get it signed. Um, I think I paid about 74 and it's going a little over 100 now, so I guess I got a good deal on it since I bought it last summer. These guys are kind of blowing up right now, um, but yeah, since it's signed and the value, I want to show that one. I'll show, I'll show this one. I, didn't, uh, I talked this about this last time um, in my Rest in Peace Honey Hole video. So it's a meters, first press. Um, just want to show it because it's you know pretty valuable. I, I was trying to show a uh, record from every genre too. And I didn't really have any soul records that were over 100 bucks. This is pretty much it. Uh, even though I already showed it, I just thought I'd grab it. Show it again. Um, this is Albert King, Born Under a Bad Sign. Um, this is the first press in really good condition. Um, so this one goes around 100 or so in this condition. And it's a blues record, and I wanted to show a blues record over 100. So uh, that's that. This is, this is obviously Born Under a Bad Sign. It's classic. It's a good album. I'm going to show this one just because I already showed it in my first video. But since it's so unique with the Onsa Combo 
I'm the Goma Grima uh, with the, the custom, one-of-a-kind, hand-drawn uh, cover. So, just want to show that one since it's rare. <clears throat> Next couple are kind of, they're not very valuable, but they're just, I thought they were interesting. I buy a lot of stuff from collections, so I just get super random stuff. So, I, I got this. This is, um, this is, it has the date on it from 1954, June 26, 1954. Radio, uh, the label is Radio Recorders. I think these are just like kind of one-off. I don't, I don't even know. People, I guess from back in the fifties, you just go in and record whatever you want. I guess it's kind of like a test press. Uh, and it's, it's on, it's an acetate. Uh, and I listened to it, and it's, it's like somebody's wedding. So I don't know. And it sounds like it's kind of in a different language, maybe Italian or something. But this is kind of like a one-of-a-kind. Thing. I mean, it's not worth anything, but I, I was gonna get rid of it. My mother in law wanted me to keep it, so I held on to it. And <laughs> it's a good time to show it, I guess. I'll never do anything with it, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, this next one, this is a test press. This is uh, this is Climax Blues Band Tightly Knit. Um, this isn't, I mean, this is really isn't worth that much, but I did see it on Sublime Media's. Um, he had it in the background on one of his recent videos. Uh, so I thought it'd be cool to show it. So yes, yeah, just, just a test press. So it's super clean. Um, I don't know. I'll probably I was gonna, I've had this to sell for a couple years, but I don't think it really sells for that much. So I've just kind of had it up on the shelf. Um, I think it's a repress too. I don't think it's the original. It's also kind of a it's kind of a bummer. But uh, and then I had in the back I have the actual. The album that it's from. Uh, this is another one. This is a this is an acetate um, of a 45. So I've never seen uh, I've never seen one of the uh, like a a test press or of a 45. And this I don't I looked at I think this is from 1969. Um, so it's just a one sided. See the other side's blank. It's just a one sided acetate. Um, this is um, Charles Brown, Abraham, Martin, and John. Um, yeah, I mean, I I think I've seen just a 45 on sale for like 10 bucks. No one's ever bought it, so it's not really valuable. I just thought it's cool. I mean, the song's okay. I, I think he was inducted in the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, <clears throat> but I don't know. I don't know too much about him. It's like soul, blues kind of thing. Um, this one I wanted to show, um, this is Lee Morgan Cornbread. Uh, I got this one for a dollar as well at the same same place I bought the Dylan. But I got this one maybe a year ago. Um, I just wanted to show this. This is in, it's in okay condition, maybe VG. But the nice thing about these blue notes is they, uh, I don't know, you get them and they're kind of scuffed up and scratched and they seem to play well. I guess it's the deep groove or something, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I don't know if this one's worth over 100 but I wanted to show it because it's, it is the only the only blue note mono I have. Um, I have a few blue note stereos, but I just never, I don't know, the monos are like super hard to find. Um, so yeah, that's the only mono I got. I wanted to, blue note mono, I wanted to show that one. Plus this album's pretty good. Uh, Cornbread, that first song, yeah, Herbie Hancock. I mean, the lineup on here is ridiculous. Lee Morgan, Jackie McLean, Hank Mobley, Herbie Hancock, Mary Ridley, Billy Higgins, I mean. Especially the first song, uh, Cornbread, just goes off. Um, so this record, this is um, Hans Dolfer uh, and Rito Natural, Candy Clouds. Um, it, I saw this one, I discovered this on one of those uh, the spiritual jazz comps. I don't have any on record. Um, Camp just showed one, uh, a couple, a series, um, so that kind of triggered triggered that but that's where I discovered there's a song on there uh, from this album I bought this when I was in Amsterdam um, I was when I was going to Amsterdam I was desperately just trying to listen to music I wanted to buy some Dutch music when I was there I went to a bunch of record stores um, so I just I discovered this like a few days before I left so I like had to have it I had to buy it when I was there and I think the first record store I went to had a copy um, I ended up paying quite a bit for it. This is one of the this is one of those purchases I paid. I overpaid for it. I mean, the thing's in really clean condition. It's on it's the original on Catfish. 
Um, this is a really good album. It's like uh, Grupo Grupo 1080, maybe I forget their name, but they're kind of like a, a psych Dutch band. So they're they're on here with Hans Dolfer, and Hans Dolfer plays sax. He's a he's a jazz musician, and then uh, Rito Ritmo Natural. He does like Latin percussion. So it's an interesting mix of like kind of free jazz, this Latin rhythm, and then like this psych. Um, so I really like this album. Um, but yeah, I definitely overpaid for it at the record store. But it's a great condition. When I kind of got home, I looked it up, and um, yeah, mint, cop mint copies were going for like 75, and I paid like 100 euro. So I definitely way overpaid for it, but still a good one to have. I, I, I listen to this quite a bit. I like this one a lot. Um, I just wanted to show this one. I wanted to show a uh, classic rock since I don't really have any classic rock that's over like super super valuable. I have a lot in that kind of like 50 plus range, but nothing that was in the hundred. But this this is Pato. This is their second album, Hold Your Fire. This is a U.S. press, and plus it's the, the only well this and the other Pato record I have are the only Vertigo uh, Vertigo albums I have. I got this on eBay for a pretty sweet deal. I think I paid like 40 bucks for it maybe. It goes for about a hundred, so in this condition, this is like super clean. So uh, I like Pato too. Their their covers are awesome. Um, this one, they always they have like these the the fold out covers where you know you fold it out and it's like a huge picture. So it's kind of like this alien dude and they're in his in his brain up there. So yeah, this is this is a cool record. This is yeah, this is a I guess you call it like prog classic rock kind of the guitar player Ollie Ollie Hassel. He's he is just amazing. This is a and it's a promo copy as well. Um, what's his name? Ali Hassal. Yeah, he's an amazing guitar player. And these guys, Pato. I, I don't know if you watch my other videos, but I, I mentioned uh, I showed the 45s time box. That's um, that was Pato before they were Pato. Pato. I don't know how to say. Um, this last one I want to show, this is a fairly recent purchase, maybe beginning of the year. Uh, this is Nino Ferrer, uh, Nino, Nino and Rodaya. Um, I got a pretty good deal on this. this was, I think this was a Discogs or eBay, I can't remember, but it was more uh, make an offer. So I made an offer that was pretty reasonable, um, but kind of on the lower end and they accepted it. And this seems like near mint. Uh, so this is the original uh, CBS uh, copy from France. Um, but this this is really cool. This has um, Lafayette, Lafayette Afro Rock Band. That's uh, the backup band on this. Uh, so this is it's super funky. Nino Ferrer, he does. Um, he's kind of out there. He he's French, but he he sang. This whole album's in English. I think well, most of his albums he's singing. I think his first couple he did in French, and then started singing in English. Um, but he he's kind of recently. I don't know when he he killed himself. He like went into a field and I think he. I think he shot himself in like this field, like pretty dramatic. Um, but uh, but this album is really really good. Definitely check out near. He's got a prog album too. I think is uh, it's pretty pretty sought after. Um, but this is the only you know, this is the only one I have. I like this one because it's super. It's kind of minimal, but it's like super funky as well. Um, so yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's. I mean, I have some other Brazilian ones that I already showed. Um, and some other stuff that I kind of traded for, but I wanted to show those just the handful of those Brazilian records um, as well. So, yeah. But uh, anyways, thanks for uh, thanks for listening.